Okay. So if we could have three monitors up front, all on one mix. Uh huh. Uh, one for the keyboard player one for the and one for the guitarist. Uh huh. How many times have you played here before? Three. Three? Four. I've never been in this building before. It's pretty awesome. The sound here really is. Well, that's but it changes thing. once the room fills with people. Is that <laughs> the, the science of, of sound? Is our, is our, is our six The film is aptly named The Russian Winter. It was the coldest cold I'd ever experienced. It made New York look easy. Well, this oh, wasn't man, a winter oh, this year. People who complain about the cold here, they, I, I laugh at them after experiencing <laughs> Siberian cold. It's really kind of mind-blowing to think that less than a year ago, you know, we were in Russia talking about doing this film, and it's not only, you know, materialized, but it, it's gotten such a warm and great reception. Did you drink the Russian Jager? I did. <laughs> I'm at a point right now where I feel like I've been so blessed, even through my adversities and hardships, that if I can just give something back, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm going to. We moved mountains with the music that was bass driven. Some will never know freedom till they face prison. I Being nominated by the age of 21 for a Grammy was pretty mind blowing. Things were just happening for me. I was traveling, I was being introduced to a new world of people and experiences. Things were falling into my lap, and I felt that you know I was destined for greatness. And I remember being in handcuffs, being escorted into Newark's holding facility. We were walking past this this elderly couple, and this woman says to her husband, "I bet he didn't pay child support." And I thought to myself, "Wow, if only it were that simple." It is what it is, so it goes in the field. We had war with ourselves, and we were soldiers to build. I grew up in Brownsville, Brooklyn. It's a place that's still near and dear to my heart. It wasn't easy. I did not grow up knowing my father at all. He left when I was an infant. Things started happening for me professionally almost immediately after high school. I made a name for myself in the New York hip hop scene by that time, just kind of rapping in underground clubs. And at 19, I took the job as the director of A&R for Raucous Records. And one day, somebody ran into the office and they were swinging this VHS cassette. And they said, I've got the future in my hands. And it was this black and white video, two guys and a girl. They were singing this song, boof baff, another sound, another die, boof baff, da 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 da. I was like, okay, this is interesting. What do these guys call? They call the Fugees. You know, Lauren basically became the keeper of my greatest secret at the time, which was after my artist would leave the studio, I would stay there until, you know, three, four in the morning working on my own material. And when they got the opportunity to record their sophomore album, Lauren called me from Hawaii and asked me if I would contribute to that. And that's what led to me uh, producing, writing, and ultimately performing with uh, one of the biggest hip hop groups. By next year, I was at the Grammys. And during that time, I was actually also being groomed for my, my own solo album. Instead of asking myself what I could have done better, I went up to the label, just filled with hubris and, and arrogance and, and entitlement. And I blamed everyone at the label for failing me. You guys have failed me. By one o'clock, I received a call from my lawyer that Sony dropped me from my contract. So I said, fine, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna make my next album on my own and you guys are gonna be knocking on my door and you're gonna come back begging me for a second chance. The only problem was that I didn't have any money. Although there are those who say it's dark. The proposition was that I help find couriers for him and I would get a cut from anything that the couriers were moving, whether it was money, large amounts of money, or whether it was drugs. I compartmentalized the thinking and thought, well, you know what, if I ever get caught, everyone knows that I'm not a drug dealer, everyone knows that, you know, I'm a rapper. And in 2000, I was arrested at Newark Airport, picking up two of the couriers. I see them standing on the, on the curb, and they're waving, and they're all happy to see me, and they, they hug me, and they're like, oh, thank God you're here. And that's when everything changed. The first couple of years in prison, that turned my back on music completely. I stayed in, in the law library for the first two years fighting my case. But then one day a friend of mine had given me a guitar and he was working in the recreation department. 
And uh, I'm looking at this like, what am I supposed to do with, with this thing? My friends and family started sending me books, you know, The Idiot's Guide to Playing Guitar, Guitar for Dummies. And I taught myself how to, how to play the guitar. It was the most liberating experience because for the first time in my life, I could actually accompany myself. I started writing songs again, and I started writing rhymes again, and I, I started I started a, this sort of newfound love affair with, with music. For seven plus years I walked wilderness, reminisced on better days like Jay's, I realized this, when I ain't even think I was missed. In 2008, after serving, you know, more, more than seven years of, of, into a 14-year prison sentence, I found out that the outgoing president at the time, George W. Bush, commuted my sentence and that I was going to get this second chance. Shortly after my release, I reconnected with a friend of mine that I went to high school with who spent a number of years in Russia. And he said, you should come over to Moscow for a few days and do a show. And I thought to myself, wow, that's a great opportunity. I've never been to Russia. But I also thought it'd be a shame to go halfway around the world and just go for a few days. I said, is there any way that maybe we could do more than just Moscow? Could we travel and turn this into a, a, a real tour? They came up with this five-city tour across Russia. Moscow, St. Petersburg, Nizhny Novgorod, Yekaterinburg, and Kazan, where I would collaborate with other Russian artists. While I was in prison, I had a small group of friends and they'd ask me questions. Hey man, have you ever been to Rio? Yeah. You ever been to Italy? Yeah. You ever been to France? Yeah. Do you have any pictures? And I said, no. And I realized that I never documented any of, of, of the traveling or any of the, the, the exciting times. And I made myself a promise. I said, you know, if I get the chance to do this again, I'm going to make sure that, you know, I capture the, these moments. I formed a company with my former classmate, and our first project was the Russian Winter. It was a learning process. It was a learning process for all of us on the road because I was never in a place where I was constantly being filmed or interviewed. It was heavy at first. You know, moments where when you don't want that camera to be in your face and you realize, ah, you know, the camera's actually in your face. This keeps happening. You can't just say, oh, this is how it's done here. But you have to be strong. You gotta be strong. If this is what you do, if this is what you do, no, it's supposed to be us against the whole country. That's the difference. You have to do the art justice by being as honest as you possibly can. You have to really document what happened, and you can't editorialize it. Yeah, let's, let's lay down the groove for you, and you can just loop it, man. Take your time and, and see if we can make it fit. Mm -hmm. All right, good. I think, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to be like one of these groups who would come in, play my songs, and then vanish. I wanted to learn as much as I could. I wanted this to be an exploratory endeavor more than anything else. I wanted to learn. We wanted to immerse ourselves in the culture. We wanted to collaborate. We wanted to build bridges with artists. So even before we left, I had the opportunity of hearing all of this music, absorbing it, listening to it, basically with a checklist saying, I'd love to work with this artist. I'd love to work with this artist. I'd love to work with this artist. And they wanted to work with me. So when we entered into the studio or when we met up over dinner, we were already coming together with this mutual respect even before we, we began the creative process. I was fortunate enough to meet the private face, going into people's homes and the generosity and the selflessness. They'll give you their last bit of borscht to make sure that, that you're satisfied. I don't think I can honestly say that I'm known outside of immediate family and, and that was pretty surprising to me. Might I remind you, this is a time when stars in alignment taught us People ask me, you know, what's next with the future of this film? I don't know. A good friend of mine gave me, I think, the greatest advice, and he said, you know what, enjoy this moment. And that's what I'm doing right now. We're enjoying the moment. You know, we're celebrating here at the Bowery Ballroom tonight. And I got like a 300 person guest list, man. It's a pleasure and an opportunity, and I'm grateful that everybody flew from all around the world for this. You know, have fun. No matter what, have fun. Cheers. Up. I formed a company with my former classmate, then we co-executive produced another great documentary called A Brooklyn Castle, which won the Audience Award at South by Southwest, and it's in theaters right now. We're very excited about that. I am completely humbled and grateful and thankful, not only for the film, but for this opportunity to celebrate our premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival. So thank you to everyone who showed up. And, uh,
whether it's through music, whether it's with a short film, a documentary, these are all gifts. And every time we have a camera in our hands and every time we have an instrument in our hands or a pen to write something, that is a gift. I'm blessed to be able to have the opportunity to make art. And that's why I don't take it for granted.